us about your new book in your Caitlin Strong series. Strong as Steel follows uh, Strong to the Bone. Uh, very excited about it because it takes Caitlin in a little bit of a different direction. What do I mean by this? The last four books, Jess, I did the Chinese as bad guys, I did the Russian as bad guys, I did ISIS as bad guys, and then I did Nazis as bad guys. Ah. So I pretty much run the gamut of bad guys. Yeah. So I decided I was going to do something, a more traditional thriller. What do I mean by that? Yeah. Years before, in 1994, before, Caitlin's father, who was also a Texas Ranger, Caitlin's a Texas Ranger, female yeah. Texas Ranger, Caitlin's Texas Ranger father, investigates the case that involves a freight car, a train freight car, where three shipping crates were stolen, and there are three dead bodies, and no one knows how they died. They just dropped dead. Years later, whatever is in those crates is dug out of the Texas desert. Uh -huh. So the, instead of doing a bad guy MacGuffin where there's a sinister plot that is right. going to be launched against the world or America by really bad guys, I went with the classic thriller MacGuffin. S the quest story, something is found, something right. on a ship, something in the ground, something in an old house. And that's, so, so the structure of Strong as Steel is based on Caitlin trying to find out what it was her father figured out about those crates and who has them now, mm -hmm. and how did they find out they were, who buried them in the Texas desert? Right. And why is it they hold within them, as you know, in a thriller, the mm -hmm. ultimate weapon? Yeah. But that's not what you think it is at first. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of mystery. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of intrigue. In other words, it's more about what it is than who's going to do it. Right. So right. it's a different yeah, kind of mystery, yeah, yeah. a different kind of thriller, more like the works of Steve Berry, James mm -hmm. Rollins, a little bit of the old Clive Cussler, mm -hmm. Doug Preston. So I'm getting more, uh, I would say that Strong as Steel is more hardcore thriller and a little bit less James Lee Burke, a little, a little bit less of the more literary, uh, which not that I'm literary. And all the books have great action, but this also has a, a fantastic climax. I mean, some great action scenes as always, but a little, a, a little, a little more slanted. Caitlin uh, doing a few more things than she's done in the past, um, and some some great personal stuff. There's also in this book, uh, Court Wesley Masters um, has a health issue. He has a health crisis. Something bad happens to him, and that's the emotional core. How does someone who's been relied on what he can do physically all his life deal with the fact that he might not be able to do that anymore? Right, so right. It's, so it's challenging yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. And how long did it take you to write this? I wrote the first draft, as always, in about eight weeks, because I write straight through. And I write seven days a week. Seven days a week? Well, wow. you ha I think you have to, because as, as, as soon as you stop, you mm -hmm. risk losing momentum. Yeah, and writing yeah. a book is a mindset. Right. It's a mindset. And if you lose the mindset, you lose mo It's kind of like running a marathon. Yeah. You can't run, writing a book is like running a marathon. You don't think about mile 26 at mile one. You right. think about mile two at mile one. Yeah. But if you stop at mile 13, it's a lot, it's a lot harder to restart. So it's a question of never letting the momentum stop. Never letting, never slowing your pace. If anything, quickening it. You can go a little slower, but you right. can't stop. Right. That's good advice. And how, how many hours do you write each day? You know, it's... Does it vary? It, it, does, it doesn't... What, what I, the most I can write, because again, the, meta, the marathon, mm -hmm. you can only run so long before you burn out. Yeah. I'm about two-hour sessions, and I do two two-hour sessions a day. Now, that's only, that, that seems like, oh, it's only four hours, but I write... In those four hours, I'm writing four to five pages. So I'm writing 20 pages a day. Yeah. That's 140 pages a week. Seven times. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, but I usually there are other things usually intrude. Sometimes I have to go back and do some work on things that didn't work as well. So when you think about 100 pages a week, 
it's really a six week process yeah. to finish the book and that's type pages as opposed to book pages. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And now tell me about the Murder, She Wrote series. I am Jessica. You didn't know I was Jessica Fletcher all these no, years. No. I, I don't have my brooch. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm growing my hair, a little, a little higher like hair. I'm starting to resound. But I'll tell you, you know what? Jessica Fletcher, Angela Lansbury, mm -hmm. best co-writer I ever worked with. <laughs> best collaborator. She never argues with me. <laughs> but I do hear her voice in my head. And the thing about the Murder, She Wrote series, mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of brands out there that have 100% name recognition. Yeah. Where literally anybody you say murder she wrote to, oh. Yeah. And what's amazing is, you know, the books are fairly well known, not not exorbitantly well known. Right. But TV show's been off the air yeah. since 1994, five, Has something it really like. been off the air? It's been off, but yeah. it still lives on. Yeah. On Hallmark Mysteries. Mm -hmm. Every single night, Midnight to three or four or five. Wow. And they Do you watch it? I, 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 I'm amazed rediscovering it. Hmm. That, because I'm trying to capture the Jessica Fletcher from a TV series, the feisty, in your face right. woman who is relentless in her pursuit of justice. She's polite, yeah. but don't cross her. Mm -hmm. That's not the same character from the books. The books, she became a little more a little more docile, a little more quiet. Mm -hmm. Not the character I wanted to write. I wanted to make yeah. her more of a detective, more right. proactive. Not worried about the local bake sale or yeah. how they're going to get more members of the Friends of the Library group. Mm -hmm. Now, I've kept a lot of that, but mm -hmm. I've cut back on it so I can get more into the depth of the mystery. I want my take on the Murder, She Wrote series to be, I want people to say, these are great mysteries. Maybe they'll say these are great thrillers, not these are great cozy mysteries. Yeah. I want them to be mysteries first and cozy second, not cozies first and mysteries right, second. Right, right. But it's, it's just such a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. And How did you get this opportunity? You know, fortune, as they say, is the residue of design. And one person's luck is another person's tragedy. And Donald Bain, who had written all 46 books in the series, he was getting older, he took ill. The original plan was for me to come in and work with him, but he was unable to work, and then he passed away. So I basically, my, we have the same agent. So it was my agent who put me up. Now, I had never written a mystery, never written, from the perspective of a 65-year-old woman. Right, right. And never written first person. So, of course, my agent called me and said, are you interested? And I said, yes. <laughs> no, yeah. no other question. Yeah, you can be. In this business, here's the thing about this business. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, what was the question? Exactly. Yeah. Kind of like actors who are told, oh, yeah, can yeah. you ride a horse? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You've got and the then part. You learn how then you go learn how yeah. to ride a horse. Mm -hmm. You know, can you shoot a gun? Marksman. Then you become a marksman. When it comes to creativity, there's a word. We lie for a living as writers anyway. Lie. Mm -hmm. If the question was, how well do you know the Murder, She Wrote series? I know it very well. I did not know it very well. Uh, but it doesn't matter. I, I was never asked that question. Um, because I believe, is there such a thing as telling the truth in retrospect or lying in retrospect <laughs> where you, you lie about something knowing you're going to do what you say right. you, you, you're going to fix yeah. the source of the lie it's kind of like no who gets hurt by that lie so anyway um i also you know it's interesting i i wonder if writing the murder she wrote books will make me better at the caitlin strong books because i think yeah. writing caitlin strong i wouldn't have been able to write murder she wrote if it wasn't for Caitlin Strong. Right. Because I had already written from the perspective of a, of a woman. Of a female, yeah. So I understood, and I had that street cred. Mm -hmm. I don't think Berkeley, the publisher of the Murray She Wrote books, mm -hmm. would have hired me at all if I hadn't had the experience of writing from another woman's POV. Right. Because everything is, is point of view, and you can't, yeah. you know, if, you, if you've done it before, then, then you have bona fides. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but more, it was just that we had the same, it, the fact that Donald Bain yeah. and I shared the same agent. And once in a while, hard work pays off because, yeah. you know, that 
I, you know, I've kept that agent for a long time and we've built a great relationship. And here's the thing, we're at Thriller Fest right now, I met him here. Oh wow. And you know, so you think about fate and you think about fortune. And if, if I'm not in New York at a certain time for a certain conference, I don't meet Bob DeForio, I don't get the Murder, She Wrote series, if I'm not, so that's just life. Yeah. And people say, might say, well, boy, you were lucky to get the Murder, She Wrote series, and I was. But luck, definition of luck is someone who puts, maximizes the opportunity when good things can happen mm -hmm. to them. If you, have, if you create more opportunities for yourself, most of which are never going to come through. Right. It's an amazing business, Jess, because in baseball, you gotta hit 300. Mm -hmm. You gotta go three out, of, three out of 10, three out of 100. In this business, one out of 10, maybe even one out of 100. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a star. Mm -hmm. And it's great how Thriller Fest really helps authors find opportunities and meet each other and learn from each it's, other. It's a wonderful life lesson in general beyond that. What you said, but even beyond that, because it's about people who were helped on the way up, helping uh, now yeah. being put in a position where they can help others. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful circular nature to this whole thing, where people give back. And yeah. then the people we give to, give to others. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 a, it's a constant chain that yeah. the links. And I take such great pride in what people say about our organization, International Thriller Writers in general, and Thriller Fest in specific. There is not another conference like this. No. There is nothing of this size that is so personal, so comfortable, so casual, that we're, as, as Steve Barry says, summer camp for writers. Yeah, that's really what it feels like. And that's what it is. It's, there's no tension, there's no competition. Writers, they, you know, as we're, we're having this interview, the great R.L. Stein is talking to people 10 feet away, you know? So, I mean, it's all bets are yeah. off. Everyone, anyone can talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. I dare you, I dare anybody to try that in the acting field. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it just no. doesn't happen. <laughs> no. I dare anyone, you know, when you go to a music festival, Bruce Springsteen doesn't doesn't come off no. and come, well, actually, he might do it, Maybe. but most people don't <laughs> come off the stage and party with the fans. Right, so right. So, writers are a unique group, and they're a special group, and our group is especially special, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Well, thank you so much. It's our annual tradition. It is, it is. Next year, Strong from the Heart. Cool, looking forward to it. I'm, look, I'm thinking a red cover. You know, yeah. a heart, red cover, how can you go wrong? <laughs>